because a column today uh, on the site uh, referring to the... I was being careful about not... I'm not saying, oh, David Irvine was here, it wouldn't have happened. But what I am saying is compare the strength of leadership, and particularly the leadership he offered and others, which is yeah. the, the people to whom they're showing the greatest allegiance are certainly not reciprocating it. And that's... No, no. So any existing leader there is now being, being knocked off balance by this. So I'm saying there's, there's layer upon layer upon layer in this. Yeah. And critically, Irvine liked Austin. He, he, he enjoyed this being down the south and amongst he did. Yeah, no, no, he did. And uh, I make a reference to another guy, Gusty Spence, who yeah. was um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Irvine's uh, mentor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no. In the UVF, did some hor- hor- horrendous things. I mean, I'm not excusing any of that. Yeah. But I had I met Gusty a couple of times. But one of the one of the things that Gusty said, his ambition was to he wanted to drink, have a pint of Guinness in the Republican Club in Dublin. My guy said, "Well, we do." Really? And I said, "Well, I'm next door with the Minister for Defence as another reception." And I said, "Do you want him to unveil it for you?" And they said, "Would he seriously?" And so he was heading up. I was on the bus heading to the Department of Defence on Park A Street. It's on the old number ten. Yeah. Says that shouldn't have happened. I was thinking, I was looking at LBJ there. It's like LBJ with the dog, you know, in his ears. Everything was branded LBJ. My God. Good oh, Lord. I, I, I understood what you're saying, but then you kind of, you said this was a turf, gang turf or drug. There's a, there's an element of, I don't know this, I don't know for a fact, I'm just going on what people have said to me, which yeah. is, and that's why I actually gave the link to the actual newspaper article that had been a series of drug raids against uh, the UDA by the PSNI in the, at the end of gangs. I don't think that's there. Are they wound up to do it? Yes. Are they been sent out as patsies under the street to do this? Yes. Right. But they think they're doing this for God and Ulster um, now, yeah. antalism. There's a greater responsibility on unionism and loyalism to explain to this generation that, and this is where I think Ireland is caught out, because how can she do that when a week before she was calling on the chief, chief constable of the PSNI to resign? That's none of the people, they, the guys who are leading this are doing it on the backs of... Interesting. Then um, I just said uh, goodbye to the hill. Um, Lee Dunn died. Yeah, that, actually, um, yeah. No, I saw that, I, and I hadn't realised he had Alzheimer's. No, I didn't either. No, no, I didn't. I don't saw him one of the, the obituaries this morning. Yeah. Um, can I just uh, briefly? There was a um, Ronan Glynn was on Claire Byrne mm-hmm. uh, live tonight. Did you were, were you watching it? No, just, I wasn't. I've watched it. No. Um, just explain the new AstraZeneca guidelines. Oh, it is on the sixty. Yeah. That was part of her program, and weighing that. Good evening, thanks for joining us tonight. As you may have just heard on the news, the National Immunisation Advisory Committee has recommended that the AstraZeneca vaccine should not be given to anyone under the age of 60. So what does this mean for our vaccine rollout? Well, I'm joined now by the acting uh, chief medical officer. Why has this decision been taken given those sorts of, of, of figures and the data emerging? Hang on, sorry, sorry, I'll just... There's a one in a million uh, incidents of death resulting from blood clots when people have had the AstraZeneca vaccine. Why has this decision been taken given those sorts of of figures and the data emerging? Good evening, Claire. Um, Yes, so so as as I'm sure the viewers will be aware, uh, NIAC, uh, our own Health Products Regulatory Authority, the European Medicines Agency, Uh, The equivalent authorities in the UK have all been looking very intensely at these issues over the past uh, month in particular, Uh, and today we received updated recommendations from the National Immunisation Advisory Committee, and they weighed up uh, the risks, the the small risks associated with receipt of of the AstraZeneca vaccine against the incidence of the disease that we have currently here in the country, uh, and of course against the availability of other vaccines that we're fortunate enough to have as part of our programme. And weighing that all up, and and again, looking at what other countries have done, uh, they've come to uh, the the key recommendation, which is that uh, the the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine should be uh, should only be used in people aged 60 years and older from from here on with uh, through the immunization program. Are we being very cautious here, given that, as I said, it's a one in a million chance of death? Sorry, I'll just stop it there. So we're certainly being cautious. Uh, there's no doubt. About oh, sorry, that, but we're being yeah. cautious. No. Yeah. yeah, no, I think, and in, t- in fairness, I think they kind of the, the, the examiner, most papers would have the story today, but the examiner has us. And what I, I think, if you go back to the examiner front page, yeah, oh, no. um, yeah. one second, I just want to show you the yeah. <laughs> the set from. Uh, oh, this is the new glorious. No, 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 this that. is this is uh, Claire Burns' set yeah. later on the show this evening. I just wanted to show you it's uh, a. Yeah. 
it's like an outdoor. Okay, I, mean, I, we, think I, I don't know. Well, I, we I assume following that... Claire's um, studio. Uh, can you it, see that? There? Isn't there something as well, which is that that, that prime time I get in there, we've got a studio makeover as well. Yeah, they've got a, I think that's a virtual backdrop, but this is the real thing. Yeah. They've got a port here, and uh, yeah. this is a pizza, pizza, a small stand. pizzeria. <laughs> it's a pizza stand, which is kind of tiki, which is kind of, so I presume it only does Hawaiian pizzas. Yeah, yeah, pineapple toppings. Anyway. Yeah, 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 I'd imagine that it is. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's quite bespoke, anyway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, examiner had... Examiner had, but the examiner at the top, at the top there, I got above what it says. AG, AC Jabs has a good breakdown. Actually, shows again the numbers of of, vac of vaccinations of the the vaccines due to arrive into the country over the next three months, which is based yeah. on the top of the health figures, which in turn were kind of prompted by RTE Prime Times program. I think it was last Tuesday week, Tuesday week back, or two, last Tuesday to say rather. Yeah. Um, and you see that we we'll looked at the the, the AstraZeneca accounts for a about 20% of the total. So you've got 3.9 million coming in, about 800,000, maybe slightly less are, uh, I think it's right, 800,000 are from AstraZeneca. 20%? Uh, yeah, yeah, about 20%, yeah, about 20%. Okay. So now, the 3.9 should be enough to get us through, and allowing that, and of that 3.9, 600,000 are Johnson & Johnson, which are single dose. So in terms of capacity, that brings it up to four point. 4.6, 4.5. So right. clearly what Anayak has kind of said, look, there's enough doses to do us if we take the AstraZeneca out of it, but it's leaving everything very, very tight. And it has to mean some slippage in terms of the timeline. Now, whether it's slippage of two weeks, three weeks, I have no, I have no idea. I'm not going nice. to make a guess of it, guess to myself of it. Assuming that, assuming that it's a 10 week, a 12 week rollout, you've lost 20%. What and if, that you will pick it up in July. I assume that this means this rolls into July rather than finishes by the end of June. Yeah. Would you be confident if you were, uh, if you were over 60 and, and in line for the... I'm not far off. I'm, I'm not terribly... No, I know. Off. I know. Well, and, and I fear that if, if they if I have to wait any longer for that, I think I will be over 60. Um, I mean, the, if you were 60, would you, would you be confident taking it? I would actually. Yeah, I think I think. Would you? Is, yeah. Yeah. I think the risk is well within the risk compared to catching COVID. I think it, it, it is, and everything's there. Really, there is a risk, and there's risk with any vaccine, etc. Now, think about it is should it be a risk that's enforced on people? Should it be a risk that said, "Well, listen, we have decided that's the vaccine you're getting, and you take it or leave it." Well, then I think well, they people said that today. It. They said that today. You can't choose your vaccine. No, that's and therefore I, that's why I would assume that they're taking AstraZeneca out of it because. Yeah, but not if you're over would, 60. Yeah, no, no, but my no, no. But my point is. If I were over 60 yeah. and somebody said, listen, look, you're coming for your vaccine, you can either have the AstraZeneca today or you can wait a month or two months to guess one of the others. I would probably take AstraZeneca today. Right. But what, what, what Niago said is, no, we're not giving that choice at all. We're taking AstraZeneca out for that cohort. And that's and I, I kind of understand why they're doing it. I do think it's, it is an excessive caution. So be it. Um, but I just hope that the, the net result of this doesn't mean that we now things that people were hoping to be preparing for in, at the end of June is suddenly pushed into August. But isn't this inevitable? We're the like the, these are experimental, even if they, you know, even well, if they're, they're, tested, they're tested to the same way any other vaccines and tests. It's just been done in a far more compressed time, and companies have had the time, energy, resources, state support. To, to 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 fast track a lot of these, but the the, the testing has been exhaustive. But um, exhaustive, but in the, but uh, you need. I mean, time is something that it didn't have, and time is something that. Well, time. Well, what you did, what you did is you had you had your time, which is six months last year, which is I think you had the phase one, and lots of these vaccines were starting around January, February. Sorry, yeah, sorry, not January, June, July. Um, so it, there is time, but it, you're right, but. But there's, if that was an ordinary, you're right, if an ordinary vaccine, there would have been maybe a two or three year period, but there wouldn't have been the cohort of people tested. There wouldn't have been the number. So in terms of time multiplied by numbers, even the rest of it, in terms yeah. of the incidence or the possibility or the, the, the permutations or combinations, whatever the phrase I'm looking for is, yeah, I think that's it. They, they've, 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 they've kind of caught up with that one. Yeah. Um, there is, I have no problem with an abundance of caution. I have no problem with this. I am just saying that my worry and I put it no stronger than this is, look, we've had slippage after slippage in targets. We've had slippage after slippage in uh, kind, of, uh, kind of not getting things, missing timelines. There's a certain amount of leeway within the system. They've now used it up for this one. 
if there's another screw up, if there's another mess up, if there's a problem with the delivery of Johnson and Johnson, if there's a delivery problem with uh, Pfizer, then suddenly now we do have a problem. So we've actually put all our eggs in one basket. That's fair enough. There's enough there to go around, but we can't afford another mess up. You can't afford a mess up with the delivery. You can't afford another mess up. I think in fairness... Particularly if you're promising like freedom, certain freedoms to the vaccinated and certain freedoms taken the, away. The, the, like, the, the, I don't, like Stephen Donnelly was on this morning and he was saying, well, look, Michal Martin has said, look, by the end of June, 82% of people will be vaccinated at least once, which is beyond the point of herd immunity. Well, and that's and I know that there's an argument is that 70% is at 75% or whatever. Um, when when it was put to Stephen Donnelly this morning, he was saying, well, look, that's not a guarantee. That's our aim. That's what we're hoping to get get to. Um, that that was before he knew he knew the NIAC advance or before the NIAC advice was was public. Um, so it, I don't think the government can afford any more slippages on this stuff. I don't think anyone can take another more slippages. I think I think the government's actually I think the last, I, all I can judge it by my own attitude. And I suddenly kind of found in the last two weeks, I've been a lot more upbeat. Now, you wouldn't know from reading the column, I write, but I've been a lot more upbeat. <laughs> yeah, you, see, you, of, you seem very well. And I genuinely, think, well, look, I genuinely believe, like I'm 59 this year. So I'm thinking, okay, look, I'm probably going to be vaccinated by the end of May, first week in June. But more than likely, I'm going to get the first vaccine by then. And um, that's not terribly far away. Yeah. I can start planning things for, I'm not going to plan anything in July or August, but I think maybe by September, October, I can actually say, well, look, I can start going somewhere, visiting people and yeah. doing things. I can, so mentally I've been putting, but if somebody comes back to me and said, okay, listen, forget all about that, put that back six weeks. I think that's going to be a, a body blow. And yeah. I just think they have to, I think the government just has to be very, very cautious about that. I think they were cautious. I think you can see why they didn't want to release the numbers a week before last, but it was the right thing to do. I think, you got to talk to people like adults. You got to talk to the country like adults, and I think people will kind of accept this AstraZeneca position. By the way, AstraZeneca have not covered themselves in glory from minute one, day one of this. Missing targets, there's some people around, um, and it's not their fault. But it, it, you're kind of going, listen, guys, that they're not a. I mean, Pfizer is a main, emerging with great credibility. Johnson and Johnson has the capacity to emerge with incredible credibility. Um, same with Moderna and this, whatever, the Novavax, I can't think of the other one is supposed to be coming kind of in a couple of months' time as well. And in Britain, they're still going ahead with the, there's no, um, yeah. there's no hold, halt on the rollout, their rollout of AstraZeneca. I mean, the, it's, their, it's their job, I guess. So. Well, it's, well, it is, isn't it? Except they're, they're using, I mean, the UK is using a ton of Pfizer as well. I think Pfizer is anywhere up to 50% of what they've been jabbing in the, in right. the UK. So right. I think I think what, I think maybe, the, I'm, I'm not too sure that there hasn't been an issue in the UK. I, did, I haven't looked, I can't remember now that I was watching something earlier and I wasn't paying full attention. So I'm not absolutely certain. I think there might be some kind of advice, health or guidance. Maybe it's voluntary. Maybe it's giving people the option. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think that, look, I mean, this. Mm. It's systems, which is, look, the, the difficulty with this is that people felt that they had an option and they could say, well, listen, I'll take that vaccine or that vaccine. I think maybe then you could actually say, well, look, fair enough, if you're prepared to take the risk and it's an informed risk. And, and like, people are well capable. I mean, I, I, can't, it, I, I was, well, there was one lady, I think she was on Newsnight last week. She was a doctor and her brother had died of a blood clot in the UK of AstraZeneca. Mm. And like, she was angry. She was distraught naturally but they kind of said but she said but by the way i'm due my second source of astrazeneca this week and i'm taking it because i've informed myself i'm satisfied with the risk that's it so she, people understand i think people can make decisions and i think there is such a burning need within people her brother died her brother, quality, died her brother had died her brother was a, she was as a, a doctor, result of the vaccine yeah and I think it was I think it was specifically this issue. I think it was on Newsnight. I can't remember. It was it either Newsnight or Channel Four? What that seems like last week. Um, she's suffering from cognitive dissonance, or rather than no, I don't know. She's no, she's a scientist. She's a doctor. She's a GP, and she said, "Look," she said, "I'm like, of course, I'm angry over this. Of course, I'm my angry brother is." She just said, "My brother is one in a million, so therefore well, it's kind of, well." No, she didn't say that, but what she turned around and said, "Look, I mean, this, these things happen. I'm angry that it's him. I'm angry that it's happening. I don't blame somebody. I don't blame the GP. I don't blame." The system for doing this um but right. you're just in saying but look this, yeah Good. but she was still i mean she was distraught or she wasn't kind of being she wasn't being calm yeah, no no she was no. distraught over us yeah but it just it was a kind of like well like, like i know i appreciate car accidents you know why people sort of 
view the medical community sometimes as a, a, like a bit of a cult. They really do believe in the scientism of it. You know, the absolute. Well, I believe, but, but there is nothing wrong with believing in science. By when, definition, when, you believe in science. When your brother science. dies of blood clot, you don't you know have it. faith in science. You believe in that which is provable. You believe that which is demonstrable. You believe that which is you no, can show you on a spreadsheet. To, to your life too, as which? well. You have to apply some reason to your life too. But that's my point, which is, and everything within that, nothing is 100%. Everything's on those margins now. And if it's 99.8% or 92 point, whatever, I mean, you make the decisions within that and you make informed decisions. It's about informed decisions. But the possibility of getting COVID is about 99.8%, zero, zero, one. You know, yeah, I mean, well, it's it, it, probably less it, of a chance it, than getting uh, blood clot. It varies, it varies across the rest of us. And I think there would be an argument that it's actually quite, that, that the actual chance of getting it but vary, but the new variants has actually increased because when you, you've, you don't need to be, the, 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 the dosage you need to get, I can't remember what the proper name is, um, the load you need to get is actually much lower. So it may, maybe, maybe it is different around that. Um, the I mean, chances of dying catching? when you catch it. So I think there's a difference between the chances of catching COVID and the chances of dying of COVID yeah. is a right. different thing. And I think that I think that's 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 a slight difference. And that and that it's chance of dying increases with your age, with your health sure. condition, whatever. Was her brother a COVID death then, Mark? Oh, well, it would be registered a COVID death, yeah. But died of a blood. No, clot. no, no. Sorry, I don't. Sorry, don't, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a related to COVID. I don't think it's actually late risk as a COVID death because it, it would have been the blood clot that killed him. Yeah, exactly. He didn't but, have COVID. He actually had it was uh, the blood clot that killed him. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he had had COVID, perhaps it would it would have been done as a COVID death. Um, no, he didn't. The, no, no, sorry, no, that, no. I meant sorry. He was. It's related no, to COVID in as much as it was as a result of the vaccine, but it isn't a result of COVID. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the very sad story here in the in the evening echo. Um, yeah, it's again, which is looking. There's so. I mean, again, which is and that guy who came back from Israel to visit his father, etc. Yeah. Um, it is just horrendous. Now, I think I mentioned we mentioned off camera earlier. Look, I was in the hospital. I tried to go to hospital today just to for to to see somebody to see a specialist, and I was in and out. And same two weeks ago, when I was down for tests, I could not. Not for a second, I couldn't fall to the hospital. They were superb. Yeah. Just the condi- just the rest of it. And the staff, and it's not it's staff, it's management, it's the whole group of people there are operating under tough, tough conditions, but they are making the experience as easy as they humanly can for people coming in and out. So whether you're there as an outpatient as I was, or you're there as a patient, or you're there to see whatever, they're making the experience. But even within those circumstances, the situations are tragic enough, particularly in this case, the, the lad, as you say, on the, on the, on the, on the echo. Yeah. It's just horrendous. It is just, and again, yeah. you multiply that out by only a certain number of people have been able to attend a funeral. There's a whole, there's... Sure. There's, there's a... Yeah. Uh, the Irish world, uh, I just wanted to... Yeah. Oh, just, yeah, this is the, the, the pensions. This, this has been a long time coming. This has been something... No, this that, is incredible. This is like kind of... Um, I, I didn't even realize that this was in the pipeline. This is part of this. This is not only is in the pipeline, it should have been in the pipeline years back. But I said, this has been just delayed and hummed and hawed. And was this part of the Good Friday Agreement? It's a, what it, it's a follow on. I think it's more to do with Andrews, as far as I remember, which is, is one of the outworkings of that. Okay. Um, which was like, I mean, in terms of what Good Friday Agreement was about historical, where the rest of us put uh, the, the payments. And these things had been delayed and it had got caught in politics. It had got between petty politics. And I'm not going to, I have a view on whose fault it is. I'm not going to start exploring that now, um, okay. um, but, um, but you can guess why I might be pushing the finger at it. But um, that, that that had got caught up. They had been, it had gone to court. The court had basically said, "Look, this, there is no objection. This is no problem with that. There is no false equivalence. People who are victims are entitled to compensation. Yeah. Move on with it because these people are they're now getting older. This these, this relates to things that happened twenty five years ago." Yeah, and um, this is racist. Now I see the backdating is only is to 2014 when the scheme probably should have come in. Um, so I didn't. I haven't seen the details in the rest. Okay, of this okay. is long, it, long overdue. This should have been something that was done by a previous executive and should have. And been this satisfied. will be, this will be people who say were uh, injured, were in, by, and it's it's see the problem with Northern Ireland is you get the, who who's a victim, uh, who's an innocent victim. Is somebody planting a bomb and the bomb explodes yeah, yeah. and kills them? Is their victim? But yeah. their family's not a victim. They, they've lost. Yeah. It. It, so it, it became this kind of within this hierarchy, and that became the issue. Who I don't want to be paid from the same scheme that paid that paid somebody who could have been a terrorist or yeah. was and was shot by the army while they were trying to do something else allegedly. Yeah. So that became a difficulty, which is category and. 
as any peace and reconciliation process, and we've had the peace process, we haven't necessarily had the reconciliation process, is a difficulty as well. Where does the victim to begin and end? Who is a victim? Who isn't a victim? Where do you start in that victimhood? Um, who are the innocent? So, so it becomes really difficult and becomes really complicated. And that was part of that kind of kind of got, got, so you see there's there's judge led panels so there will be but there's now clearer um thing and it is basically to give to give the, not say the benefit of the doubt is to say look you are entitled to this etc so and, mm-hmm. but there I mean just are so many people who are genuinely were just going around their normal business and then a bomb went off or were caught in a situation yeah, yeah, of course. which they had no intent and, uh, uh, and the psychological, psychological I mean the whole the whole, um, everyone was in trauma, weren't they? I mean, it's a well, it is, it is it's a huge one. And like, if you look at what happened in, um, we said the Enniskillen, I mean, just, I mean, in terms of, I mean, that reached to Spain yeah. and it's, it, yeah, it's, it, it's yeah. intense. There's some yeah. people are there, and, and it, so there's a whole, there's a whole oh, massive panoply. And look, in terms of even people who are in engaged in terrorism, etc., I mean, that there is also the, the trauma that that's sometimes yeah. they were put into that, that they. They allowed themselves to be put in that position, but but what brought it, what brought it about was another trauma. So I mean, it, it's of course would that include like a lot um, of these things. Trauma has builds trauma and breeds trauma. So I mean, it, it's yeah. Would that include <coughs> Oma? Uh, yeah, Derek, would it? Yeah, which would that include Oma? Best my knowledge, it does. Best my knowledge. I don't. I, don't, I haven't looked. I haven't looked at this in, in green. Um, I just actually saw there. Yeah. Very interesting story here that a, a professor, an Irish speaking professor, is uh, she, he's been appointed Irish. Uh, the first ever foreigner is a personal trustee of the Kew Gardens Board in London. Um, he'll be reporting to the Queen on Kew Gardens, uh, the largest botanical gardens in the world. The, um, yeah, he'll be a personal trustee. He'll be responsible for reporting directly to her yeah. on... Um, you, you've yeah, seen, you seem, don't seem particularly impressed. Uh, kind of non close and very so, yeah. Well, it's kind of, I'm glad to see the Queen in constant touch with the grassroots, but. Um, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's a long <laughs> way from Sir Anthony Blunt, who was the keeper of oh, the her keeper of the, the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> She's now got a long hair. That's, um, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Bennett. Um, Alan Bennett. Alan Bennett's great play, and the rest of which opens up with the kind of. With her kind of, there's, it, 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 it's a question, question of attribution, which is just a yeah, brilliant yeah. concept around the play, yeah. which is talking about the guy being the fourth man as part of the, yeah. uh, the, the, the thing. And then kind of, well, what's the background of this painting? How, how do we know it's genuine? <laughs> and this incom- incredible conversation conducted at two levels. It's just, yeah. again, I'm a big, big fan of, 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 of Bennett, but just mm-hmm. each, his yes. wordplay in that is just superb. Um. Wherever she may roam, this is oh sorry, uh, Bernard Purcell is probably out having a pint tonight, uh, added yeah. to the Irish world because in London they're the boozers are back. Yeah, but, but outside only, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a great picture actually from the cover of cover of this star that I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Uh, uh we'll get to it anyway. This is Rachel Blackmore, fantastic. Um, yeah, they the happy. I wish that I'd had known beforehand, eleven to one. I would have it's one of the few races I ever stick any money on. Eleven to one. Eleven to one she committed on, yeah. I mean, that right. Like that, yeah. Right. I thought the bookies were battered. That doesn't sound like a... It's not a huge number. I think there was, I think, because they pay out and so, I don't know what the second, third one was. Well, because everybody has twice and everybody putting it on, you know, like yeah. the, it was a yeah. kind of novelty bet or not a novelty bet. But... Well, no, yeah, that was, yeah, it was. Yeah. Um... I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you would have got, I'm sure you would have got a better price kind of earlier. I think it came in as 11 to 1, so. Yeah. That's what it started out at, yeah. And it's, uh, I think, um, Racing has recovered from. It only it was probably only last month, but your man sitting on the horse. Remember the. It, yeah, it looked like racing was. Uh, image. I don't of, think. I think he took a hammer and but um, yeah, but look, that's he did. But they, I mean, it, 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 this is a. Look, I mean, right? Look, racing first and foremost, a goddamn big industry here. It, it pays a lot of money into the economy, um. But I think I, I even saw that in wrestle, which is they kind of they've kind of got their heads around how to do close race meetings. Get the stuff broadcast out to people, etc. And kind of, but look, the, 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 I've n- haven't said that I'm not a big race goer. I'm not a big horsey person. Um, the a couple of occasions I have been, like go to Beach Punchestown or up up to Leopardstown. The, the the atmosphere is electric. I mean, in fairness, it is something that you, I do see why people um, get excited by it. You're not a go away tent habitué, uh, Derek. No, 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 no. no. I'm not even. I'm not even aware of the concept. No, no. 
You're, you're, you're I have not... no memory. I have no memory of that whatsoever. <laughs> I was now. No, no, I have. No. I am not known. I am not now, no. nor have I ever been in the COVID tent. <laughs> no. no. Um, I'm going. I've got the Irish Daily Mail has just come in. Can I just? Yep. No problem at all. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much the same as uh, Lichtenstein night, nightmare now with the yeah. AZ. Um, yeah, I think I think it, they didn't help themselves today by basically cancelling all AstraZeneca doses tomorrow. And considering that we're not down to the 60s yet, I just thought that was a kind of a strange one. Um, yeah. So they, look, again, but again, again which is, I, yeah. I do, they, there are moments when you do have to accept that experts do have to make decisions on this thing. So let them I'm yeah. to get into the 48 hours on this to sort themselves out. Have they heard something that maybe we haven't or something? You know, like. No, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I suspect yeah. not. I suspect not. I mean, there's, well, I'm I mean, a there's no shortage. There's no shortage. Of, of commentary on this and you look right around it because like, the first time this came up i think was was it norway was the first one to raise and then uh, holland had raised concerns and finland, the finland stopped it completely yeah. austria so there's had been various places this has been an issue this has been looked into yeah. um and now they've kind of said well no this isn't this isn't an issue for everyone this is an issue for people under a certain age now i do think in countries they've kind of done it at certain cutoff points um, and, and at the end of the day, this is a judgment call. Look, whatever yeah. way you look at this, somebody has said, look, well, that I've decided that stat is okay, that stat's not. Well, okay, yeah. Um, let's, yeah, let's just go with um, Melda May, long way, long way from the kind of quiff and... Uh, oh, actually, I didn't, would you believe I didn't actually cop? There was an Melda May when he was a couple. Yeah, of yeah. Time, yeah. Yeah, no, she's yeah. Seen, um, a completely different... No, very looked, very looked, looked, yeah. almost. I mean, she was a uh, rockabilly or yeah. Um, see what it gets. Sorry, that's the yeah. Um, I think it's William and Philip. William, he would want to get on us to get on with the job. Yeah. It's not that's not William. That's George, isn't it? That's the next one down. That's that's William's young fellow, isn't it? Oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Prince George. I beg your pardon. Oh, dear God, man! What kind of a Republican are you that you don't recognise the royal, members of the royal family? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's a crackdown on queuing for the pubs outside the pubs, so it's yeah. they're just making... yeah. I saw photographs or pictures or live footage from Soho, and it was the queuing wasn't wasn't what wouldn't even come near it. Yeah, it was yeah. fairly thronged. Um, legend of banter, Harry's tribute to his grandfather. Yeah, this is. I think I think one of the other papers makes this kind of draws this contrast, which is Will kind of oh he was a great man and great leader and yeah. blah 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 and statesman etc. And then Harry the other one, which is Bans. legend of banter. And the guy's not, <laughs> that's kind of what he was, which he was. He was a. I quite yeah. like when I'm when I like when I'm doing speech writing. The rest are kind of saying to people, listen, always bear in mind the great the wise words of the uh, Duke of Edinburgh. But the backside can't endure, the brain can't absorb. So you're speaking for 58 minutes and no longer. <laughs> I think that he was, um, I, okay, and apart from the, the extremely politically incorrect and very 1930s jokes uttered in 1990, um, or one-liners, <laughs> yeah, he, was yeah, actually yeah. Quite, he was actually quite quick, quick quizzes. I mean, there's stuff from him not. from the kind of the variety yeah. awards from the 60s where he's trading quips with uh, oh, Eric yeah. Markham. Now, they're all very deferential. Um, but I think he was he was a kind of a kind of I would say he was kind of a naval figure and the rest of us. I'm sure he was salty enough at yeah. well, well, he's, I mean he was completely racist. Uh, and, well he's know. a he, I, I, I'm not defending him, he's a product of his time. He's a Greek from the 19th well, to 1910s. He was a bit more racist even than that, even No, no, know. I grant you that. No, no. I, I grant you that, yeah. I mean, yeah. He was. It's interesting to see the picture of him well, not that he has kind of uh, like um Dickie Mountbatten and all that, but the photograph of him with McGuinness is extraordinary, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's physical. Yeah, it's, it's, and by the way, and I think I, I think the thing which is thinking today in the instalment and in, in the assembly, there were tributes paid. And I think I think Shannon's like really went, kind of got the mood right last week, which is with their tweets and their comments, etc. And said, look, yeah, we pay tributes, we recognize, we recognize the role of the royal family in. Um, I do think it's common. I think it has been commented on here before, but certainly like when I was involved with Glencree many years ago, one of the things yeah. one of the people to visit there was Prince Charles. No, I wasn't inside in the room because Prince Charles met with a load of victims there, a lot of people who'd come through Glencree. Right. And I talked to people, talked talk to people, like he he addressed them, but then actually turned around and said, But I'm a victim too. And people said, Look, I lost my uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 um, oh God, the man's name's going out of my head. Who was Philip's uncle? Um, it was his great uncle. Yeah, my baton. Yeah, my baton. Why the name wouldn't go to my head? Oh. 
but I lost my life. But he actually talked to people as in, like, we're all we're all equals. It was, I'm told by people who were there kind of going, they were genuinely kind of, they weren't expecting this. They were expecting him to come in and tell them that they're all done wonderful. You know, the kind of the typical yeah. royal family stuff is yeah, yeah. at your own head. And else, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much and move on. And, but they were genuinely kind of, I'm not saying that the royal family moved the peace process forward by any stretch of imagination, but they kind of did bits and pieces when they were told to, when they were required oh, to. Yeah. Well, like I would say Charles. Big, huge symbolism here. Completely. Yeah. I mean, be yeah. speaking Irish in Dublin Castle, bowing her head when she went to the Garden of Remembrance. Small little gestures. Yeah, yeah, completely. No, of no. Which were meaningful and were intended and were yeah. meant to be. I'm probably right. against Philip's best wishes. I'm that, sure you know, the rest. I mean, couldn't have been because I mean, I mean, I mean, like I mean, basically, Mountbatten was determined to put Philip in there and wanted the house, wanted the House of Windsor renamed to the House of Mountbatten. I can't remember. There's one of these brilliant documentaries from. Yeah, I've, I've spent the last couple of weeks looking up Michael Cockrell documentaries on YouTube, and they're, oh, and they're superb. Yeah. But there's a few of the ones that pop up every so often. And there's one of them which talks about Mountbatten and Mountbatten. I mean, if you think. Uh, Philip was was odd. Mountbatten, who ah, here, yeah, was part of the, would seem to be part of the campaign to bring down Harold Wilson or uh, that yeah. time to the sixties to set up and, this rival, yeah, yeah with with um, the Hugh Cudlip, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and the, the guy from it was a whole ring. There was a good yeah. businessman and the rest of it was, I can't, I'm not going to name of who they generals and yeah, majors. Yeah. And stuff. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they were kind of sitting yeah. down in their kind of a gentleman's club somewhere, deciding I think we should take over the country. Yeah, but the. the but it also, which is Mountbatten stuff earlier, when 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 uh, uh, Philip married the Queen, which is the kind of the move to try and rename the family the House of Mountbatten. Exactly, yeah. And kind of somebody went in, but I think whatever that Mountbatten had this new carpet weaved, and which was the, the Mountbatten crest on it, and this, right. this was going to be the new royal crest. Well, Philip was his entree in, wasn't it? That's exactly that, and he expected Philip to to bang the table and say, "No, no, I'm the I'm the father of the kids. I'm going to decide this." And, yeah. Philip clearly made a decision. Do you know what? I'm I'm not doing this. I'm not going down that road. So oh, no. again, which is real orphan, you know. Oh yeah. Well, he got uh, like he was he as a mind well, right, Jack. Listen, Louis, now go and sort yourself out. Well, the the um, do you know the South Pacific Island that uh, venerates Philip as a as a, a deity? Um, no, I miss that one. No, no, no. Yeah, there. There's a tribe, and they speak pidgin English. You know, pidgin English. This kind of the yeah, yeah. But they deify Philip as a, as a god. You know, yeah. and uh, I saw a, a, an item on the news tonight that where they how they broke the news of them. Yeah, yeah, they're heartbroken. You know, obviously, and uh, yeah. but most most odd. No, that I don't know if you know. There's a brilliant comedian, Alex Edelman. He's a young guy. Um, mm. He's a, he's a Young New York comedian, but he was he made a big career in the UK. It's only like it's only late twenties, early thirties. But he used to do this thing about Coco the gorilla. You know that the gorilla who could communicate and talk. Oh to yeah, gorillas. yeah. And anyway, but they, so they said he said like one of the famous things was Coco had done a, a couple. It had met Robin Williams and had connected completely with Robin Williams. And but somewhere in the news it announced that they told Coco that Robin Williams had died, and he said like, but they did have to. He wasn't going to read about it. Just why did they tell him? And they said, like, so, so what's the next conversation? They go, well, oh, this is really bad. The, the coke was kind of go, this is dreadful. Robin Williams is dead. i got to tell Harambe. How's Harambe? <laughs> and I said, like, like, why did they tell people in this island? Let them yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't, they're not going to find about it in CNN. I mean, God, I, mean, I, I assume they're not. Fair. Fair, yeah. is it? Um, yeah. And we... Uh... Um, are you are you interested in the Cameron story? That, uh, yeah, I have now. I, I haven't really gotten into it, um, and I just saw it on the front of the FT, and I saw the rest of it, and I can't remember somebody. That, I think actually Alistair Campbell had a good couple of series of tweets on it today. Yeah, which is listen, guys, this is bad. This is seriously bad. Oh, Campbell, yeah, well he would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh no, he would, but but he also saying, but listen, guys, this reaches right into cabinet. Don't get don't get hung up on the Cameron des deserves to be flogged for this. But don't get hung up on that aspect and miss the bigger story, which is the ease of access across the cabinet, the ease of access. The number of these guys are looking, Boris's own stuff for the rest of it. So let, kind of, let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's not miss the wood for the tree, unless that means forest for the sight yeah. of a couple of trees. But oh, it is a horrendous story. Well, Boris has turned on. <coughs> Excuse me. This is uh, some some of that old fashioned boozing on the on the Thames, I think. Uh, yeah. 
I did express we'll get on with the job and it's about Harry. Harry plays yeah. tribute to Cheeky Legend. Yeah. The, the, that's the, the, the contrast, which is the, the, the kind of, yeah, that, that thing. I yeah. think, no, this is the next one. Actually, it's the Metro that has words apart. Oh, yeah. A legend of banter, a lifetime of service. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of uh, them is talking about the Queen's husband and the other guy is talking about his granddad. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Carefully choreographed, perhaps, you know. I'm a cynic, though, you know. I am. I would be surprised if there wasn't some management in this. Yeah. Uh, life after lockdown for dogs. I am concerned that you know lo- dogs aren't just for lockdown. You know, they're yeah. they're for, <laughs> for yeah. life. You're obviously not. Okay. No, no, no. I don't. I, I have to say, like, I mean, it, 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 I would if I. There was part of me was thinking about a year ago, maybe I would get a dog, and I would love to have a dog. Problem is, I travel so much. I just, I would, I don't think it's fair if you're going to be traveling to be putting a dog into in and out of kennels or hand them to this person, that person. I just don't think that's fair on any, on any animal. Um, but maybe a goldfish, who the, how the hell are they going to know? But um, so it isn't, but I would, I mean, if if I thought I could have had a dog, I would have gladly had a dog here. Now, the problem is the damn thing would have to walk itself because I wasn't walking it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on, just there was this Sarah Green on her new Irish comedy. Do you know anything about that? That's a brand new one, one of me. Sarah Green, um, is she the Bond girl? Is she Bond? That's a good. That's a, that's a question which I truly can't answer. Okay. Because for some reason, for some reasons, when I think of Sarah Green, there's somebody coming in from one of the Saturday morning. Yes, you know, kids yeah, shows yeah. from the 1930s or whatever. Or no, no, the 90, 1990s, yeah. I should say rather. Sarah Green, yeah, Saturday morning. Yeah, uh, she's because, on with Noel Edmonds of one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mike Reed, I think. Uh, yeah. Racing Post, anything there interesting? Strange enough, no, I don't know that is away with that, yeah. yeah. One, though. There's a there's a yeah, I'm just looking up Sarah Green at the moment. Was it uh, best known for Westway production of The Cripple of Inish Man? Ah. Um, I couldn't include this. No, I just, I'm not saying anything about this. Yeah. It's not the born be- from Cork. That's this. okay. Oh, mm-hmm. she was in that's she was in Dublin Murders. I forgot about that, yeah. All right, yeah. Um, this is great, <laughs> great photograph. <laughs> yeah. Bye. We're living the dream, Dave. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Thank God it's not soup. They've never finished the bloody bowl. Anyway, That's great, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Fire ups outside in the snow, beer in the rain, and queues at the shops. But we honestly... Worst, the amazing thing is, like, I, that would have been me. I mean, I think as explained to you earlier, which is like an appointment in the hospital, and just there was delay. So I was about to totally just get a coffee and stand outside. It was absolute heaven. And even if it was raining, I was thinking, do you know what? I don't care. It'd be grand. It was just... Just to get out and at, like in fairness, I was I was outside my five kilometers, but suddenly dropped. I'm not allowed to go outside five kilometers. What the hell am I on about? No, no. Um, your mom? Um, actually, Grant, not a problem. I mean that uh, not a problem with the vaccine. Not that uh, she was on. Uh, she had Moderna shot there, so I think she's doing next shot next the end of next week. Yeah. So Grant, um, again, which is whether see- the weather where she is now kind of just turned a wee bit of the last day or two, so she was given out that it's only twenty two degrees or whatever the hell it is plus rain. So. Uh, nobody's, ever, nobody's ever happy anyway. when will you see her again in person well that's what I'm saying which is <clears throat> they it was one of the things that actually came up in Eamon Ryan's point and the rest of which is like um, when Wayne was right mentioned about the hospital quarantining and the rest of it like well why are people who are vaccinated in Israel or somebody else why mm. did they have to show because there's no international standard on proving that you're vaccinated you can't you can't just go and say I've been vaccinated and like, well where's the proof of where's the certificate and Right. No, the people don't recognize each other and they don't know what the rest of it. Um, so the sooner the green passport is sorted out or that green card is that, that's mean that's that I can go to to Spain. As soon as I can go, I'll go. That's it. I mean, if I'm vaccinated in June, July, and I can get into plane in the first week of July. Yeah. I'll pop over and see her for a couple of days and I'll come back. You know? And and I don't my um friends of mine that live on the French Belgian border, but they live on the French side. So they had to go down to Brussels. Both of them are vaccinated. Both of them have had their two shots, but they still need to have PCR tests before they go down to Brussels. Mm. It kind of seems a wee bit redundant. And if anyone's had a PCR test, it's not the most pleasant thing, particularly when you have to pay for it as well. Mm. And so they have to go down and get a PCR test. But because the PCR test is recognised, but they don't recognise the certificates. on. So the sooner this thing is sorted out, a green, whatever they call it, the green card, the green certification, or the, the YAP or whatever it is, the sooner that's sorted out, the better, because... Um, let people and to have a system that's commonly recognized that you know because I mean the look, you, look you, down, yeah 
Will you make a nice colony for us rat lickers then, Derek? Will you will you arrange that? I mean, with your influence, make a, a, a give us a sort of space where we can live happily and maybe grow our own food. And well, I'll tell you what. Actually, here's talking about looking at YouTube late at night. Something I discovered, which I was totally unaware of, and of course everyone else knew, right? No clue about. It which is that Lambay Island has a colony of wallabies. I yeah. never knew that before. Amazing, isn't it? It is extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. And there's a couple of American but kids... Nobody who, talks about it either. There's a couple of American kids who did a documentary about it. And it's, that, well, it's the Baring family, or the Baring family who owned the island, etc. or something like that. But anyway, whatever. there's a couple of young American kids who've done a couple... Highly recommend to people, go onto YouTube, look up Lambay Island wallabies. A couple of fascinating little documentaries. I'll put it up on the site tomorrow. About 15-minute clips and the rest of it. Mm. So what I'm saying is, Talky Island, that's fair enough. Lambe, uh, Ireland's Eye, we'll find somewhere for you. So, I mean, like a little. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's loads of little islands off the coast of Spain. I mean, yeah. like, where you are there. Spike, I, is, Spike Island uh, is, is, is available, I gather. Yeah. I'll talk to Dan Boyle on Thursday. And we'll Absolutely. I'd love, I'd love, I mean, like, I mean, if you're stuck for a few bob to stick yourself in Dan Boyle on Spike Island, I'll throw in a few. <laughs> we'll start to go fund me. I have no problem with that. No, Dan is, is no, Dan's getting the back. So, uh, oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, no, no, I, I know he's getting the bags, but I just think he should be in Spike Island anyway. Yes, I know. <laughs> Derek, thank you. Uh, no so problem, Tom. Derek's columns on the site today, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next Monday. Absolutely, yep. No problem, Tom. Okay.